Veterans Memorial Coliseum, the original home of the Suns, and eventually known as the Madhouse on McDowell. They throw it up front and stolen by Dan Marley. Here comes Marley. He jams it at the buzzer, and the Suns win. The Suns win. The Suns win the ball game. The Madhouse on McDowell served a great purpose for our franchise. If it had not been there, Phoenix would never would have had a franchise, period. It was just right for Phoenix at that time. I loved it. The louder it got, the more I could concentrate and more energy and adrenaline I got from playing at home. It, it was so cool to go there and play. I mean, you drive through a neighborhood and <laughs> and, and there's just nothing pretentious about that building. And back then, especially, it was the same folks coming every game. You knew everybody in your section. What a great place to play. Fans cheering, and we, we had a lot of great games in there. That place there was special. That place was special, man. It wasn't like a pristine place to play. Uh, it wasn't, it was like our Boston Garden. It has to be the most friendliest, coziest place I've ever played in my life. I mean, you, you just thought that everybody was sitting in your living room watching you play basketball. It wasn't like glamorous or anything, but it was, it was blue collar, go to work, loud, and just, just awesome. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. Madhouse on McDowell was unbelievable. One of those old time stadiums where this crowd was right on top of you. It was a small condensed space. The roof was like right here above your head, it seemed. It wasn't way up there. And so when you have that kind of a compact feeling, the noise. Just the, the energy, the people, um, the games that we had there. And sometimes, to be honest with you, in the tight games, I think it was made the difference in the game. The feeling that you were really a part of the game when you were at the Coliseum. Madhouse on McDowell, man. I mean, it was so much fun. The few that you got every night you step in there, and it was going to be a you know, just an up-tempo, fast, fun way to play. You never knew what could, could run into your gym bag <laughs> in the locker room. I remember one time I was lying down stretching and something ran past me, and I was like, what was that? <laughs> you know? With Joe Prosky back then, I mean, I, I don't tape, I don't do anything, I just wanted a hot tub. I want to jump in a hot tub before, so they went and got me a, one of those little hot tubs you put on your patio, you just brought it in here. I had my little rubber ducky and I'd, I'd go in there. The, the locker room was, was just had a little piece of carpet over the top of the concrete. Coming into the arena, you had to come down and park, and you would go by five, six hundred fans that would give you high fives. I had a convertible at the time, so I can, I can give high fives while I'm getting, coming in and parking. They'll cheer you on. But we didn't care, man. We, we knew when the game started, those fans were going to be into it. Out to Eddie. Puts it up from 20. Gets it from 20. That place in the old Chicago arena, where you came out of the tunnel and walked up the stairs. It's like you were almost walking into a gladiator. I mean, it's just look out. Uh, McDowell was a lot like that because of the way the fans sat right on top of you. So Met House and McDowell was a very personal place to play. It was like a lot of the older arenas where you were closer to the court, closer to the action, closer to the players. And uh, I think that's what really gave it that gold star of the Madhouse on McDowell. Listen to the Madhouse on McDowell.